What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Where a drunk mind speaks sober thought. We got a guest today. We got a guest today. Y'all know. Y'all know I love when the rap girls come on the show. Yes. <laughs> I be so excited. So y'all already know who it is. It's we Carbon. Got... Yes! <laughs> Oh, what's going on? You look so Hi. cute. Thank you. Let me say, like, because I, I mean, obviously, I've seen your social media, but when you walk, I love when the girls walk in and kind of just like blow me away. Yes, it's polished. like the pink very hair, much good the and pink polished. Fit, very polished. Thank you. Very put together. So, thank you for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me today. Thank you. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Have fun. It's gonna be a good episode. Yeah, we're gonna have thank fun you. today. So we gonna we gonna we gonna just go ahead and get into it and kick it off because yeah. you're young. Yeah, you're I'm what 22. 20, 22. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's so crazy because you know we did our little research beforehand, you know. Mm -hmm. But obviously, you have always kind of been on the scene. But before you were doing um, doing music, you were selling hair, right? So talk about that transition that you made. Yes, girl, I still sell hair. It wasn't no transition. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So you still <laughs> these, sell hair? Yeah. These the bundles that I sell. Beautiful. This is my six thirteen week. Yeah. <laughs> it looked good, and it Thank died you. really well too. Yes, Thank you. It but um, it was really like when I had first got out of high school Because when I was in high school I had dropped like a song And everybody knew the song It was like weak ass bitch It was me and my brother Me and Pooh Pooh Shiesty <laughs> So we dropped the song Whole high school love it Everybody in the whole motherfucking Memphis love it And it's like I wasn't trying to rap though Like yeah. I'm just trying to do something Like I'm just bored on the weekend We going to the studio yeah. Like that's how I look at it And um so when I graduated high school, that's when I started selling her. Mm -hmm. um, it started because I was selling lashes. And then my lashes started getting off. And I'm like, I could make more money. So I started selling her. And I ended up start selling everything. Like, I know my neighbor, it got to the point where I used to have so many cars lined up in front of the house. Like, one time I was outside, my neighbor came running down the whole end of the street. Like, girl, what is you selling out of this house? <laughs> she was like, we was down there talking about you and her friend. She looking around the corner. She like, we was talking about you. So, yeah. I was booming with selling her, mm -hmm. and then, like, I just started, like, taking my rap a little more serious, but I really had the passion for the her. But, oh, so that was, like, your first love. You still love it, obviously. I still love it. Yeah. Yeah. So the talk, industry talk, is a booming industry, too. Yes, it is. Like The I beauty like, industry in general. Like, I feel like you could never lose with having a business in the beauty industry because well, no matter what, if bitches is broke, they still want to look cute. They want to look good. Yeah. They want to look they cute no look matter what. That's all I was going to say. You know, they say every time we have a recession and everybody is struggling, mm -hmm. like the nail shops, hair salons, they never, because a woman will have her last. She'll have $3, <laughs> but she going to figure out a way. When I had my $3, I was going to Target. I was buying my press on yes. nails. And when I, that's what I'm talking about, the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. I literally would have nothing, but I'm going to go, I'm going to buy me a little synthetic weed. Yeah. You know, try to hook that's it up. That's true. It's a, it's a lot of money in the beauty industry because mm -hmm. I had started with the lashes and her, but like I said, it ended up going to other stuff. Like I was selling clothes. Like mm -hmm. I made my really like largest profit off clothes. Really? I just couldn't keep doing the modeling and stuff. Uh -uh. Yeah. I like getting my hair done more. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, like the beauty industry never slow down. Like everybody always want to pop out. Like they want to go to the club. They want to yep. go to the show. They want to, bitches always going to want to pop out. <laughs> so very true. You going to forever make money making them look good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy that we talking about this because this reminds me of something I actually saw on the internet the other day because I think it's important that you said, you know, you have that passion for hair. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same thing with her because she has a lip gloss line. Yeah. Um, I you, it. Yeah. Mu Shout out to Muse Beauty. Period. But I think it's because, like, y'all are passionate about that. Because one thing I will say, I'm feeling like, and y'all let me know because y'all know I be hating. I'm a hater. I'm a certified <laughs> hater. I be hating. Girl, she is on But I feel like sometimes I feel like it's kind of like the um, the celebrities. It's like I feel like they're always trying to sell us something. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the celebrities are always coming out with something to Right, sell. right. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, do I want this just because it has XYZ mm -hmm. name slapped on it? Or is it actually a good product that you did your research on and you care about? Mm -hmm. I say from an entrepreneur standpoint that it's also a celebrity. Mm -hmm. I think that it will show based on the results. Like, I feel like when you really put your time, your thoughts, your mm -hmm. efforts into something, it pops off more differently than when you just go and partner with somebody who can make you um, perfume. You right. go partner with somebody who can make perfume, and you like, okay, we're going to slap my name on this because I know if I slap my name on this, it's going to get sealed. Right, right. It ain't going to be talked about. It ain't going to mm -hmm. be pushed about, like, pushed around, like, 
You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think that you're going to see the results based on the passion for it. I Some agree. celebrities might just slap their name on it to be like, oh, I'm such and such by my stuff. Yeah. And some people really do be putting a they blood, Time. sweat, and yeah. Skin. Like you can tell the difference. Yeah. The quality, the difference in the quality. I feel yep. like when you really do your research and you really work on something, the quality is just gonna be top tier. Mm -hmm. Because you have people who have wanted to start businesses and they didn't start the business for a year, two years, right. just so they could find the right vendor, find a good vendor, mm -hmm. or you know, manufacture their own product. Mm -hmm. But then you have people who just trying to get a quick dollar and it shows in the product. Yeah, and dude, I feel like with that shown. type of stuff, it don't never last mm -hmm. either, though. You know, like yeah, you can make a quick little $50,000 real quick. But mm -hmm. once everybody get their products and they see that it's not good quality, the business not going to last. They're going to word them out spread. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, really, really, really fast. Because mm -hmm. like I said, y'all know I'm a certified hater. And I'd be <laughs> like, mm -mm, I'm not buying that bookie. I'm not sold. But I can say, I don't feel like I've ever bought any products from like a celebrity and it wasn't a good product. I'm right. not going to lie. Not gonna lie. Because I feel like they be doing their due diligence, especially these days, because so many people be ready to blast you yep, on the internet. Yep, yep. I feel like I, I did. I bought really? a blush, and it's not Rihanna, because I know y'all gonna be in the comments being messy, because <laughs> I use I use a lot of fancy products. Yeah, right? I, I fancy love too. fancy products. I love fancy products. I feel like Rihanna put time into her. She, she definitely did. Because I'm not even a girly girl, and I had her lip gloss, and bro, like, I'm not saying that just because it's Riri. Yeah. yeah. For real, yeah. it made my lips, everybody so complimented juicy. it. And it lasts. It does. And it had Little sparkles in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not, I, I only use two clears. I use Glaze by Muse Beauty, and I use the I think it's called um it's called Gla Ice Bomb or Ice Something by Fifty. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. a clear, but it has like a little blue tint to it. And it's real icy, mm. it's so pretty. But yeah, those are the only two uh, clear glosses I use. But I have bought a blush because I'm like I'm kind of like into blush now. Okay. Um, shout out to Mona Leo because Mona Leo got me into the blush. Oh, yeah. the she did blush the pink move. blush. Oh, and yeah. she like puts it on her nose. Mm -hmm. That's so cute. So cute. Yeah, so so cute. cute. <laughs> shout out to our girl Mona Leo. We gonna talk about her in a second. Okay. So, but I I got this blush and it was really popular and it's from a celebrity line. It's like in Sephora. I think I got it from I either got it from Sephora or Ulta. But anyways, everybody was. I'm seeing all these TikToks about it. I'm seeing right. everybody, and I tried it and it was it was awful. It didn't last. Mm -hmm. It made me look ashy. So I felt like these reviews that you were getting, that's another thing you don't know. Mm -hmm. People be paying these people and you're reviews. supposed to put ad under there, but you know, people be paying folks under the table. Mm -hmm. So they don't they put do. ad on it. So you be, oh, this is not paid. Mm -hmm. This okay. is my honest review. No, it's not, girl. Right. I know the tea. I told y'all I'm a certified hater. I do. Are you a certified hater or do you really just be speaking your mind? I speak my mind. You be speaking your mind. I speak my mind. I think sometimes it might come off as me hating, but look, I just tell the truth. Yeah, like I didn't get to the point where I didn't stop lying, like, because sometimes I do just be lying, but not in a bad way, bro. Yeah. yeah. I'm you a know. liar too. I, I be, be lying. Like, lying I be, be nice. I be trying to sugarcoat yeah. it or yeah. I try to, like, if I'm lying to niggas, like, I really probably just don't want to hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. Right. But, Anyways, I got it to the point where I be telling the truth and it come off like a hater, but I be like, I promise I'm not angry. But I got some but points okay. I feel. Yeah. I feel like it's best to tell the truth. Like, it keep is. it real with people. But I do understand that too because I feel like I used to do that too. Like, you just, you don't want to hurt people's feelings. Right, right, right. So you definitely be like sugarcoating shit and mm. trying to tell a little white lie. Oh, like, what I'm, right, like what I mean by that is like, say for instance, if somebody do nails and they your friend and you don't want to hurt their feelings, so you talking about... Girl, no. But then they might think you hate it if you tell them, like, girl, I'm not going to lie. This ugly, like, you got to do the corners. You got to... <laughs> like, they might be like, uh-uh, bitch, my work good. Like, they were, I didn't experience you, that because I be honest. You got to say it, though. Like, yeah. to do something else. And I just... <laughs> what I don't even think that. I just feel like, where do we cross the line of, like... Hating and constructive criticism. criticism right. Because people should be able to take criticism about something. If you, if that's what, what your craft well, is, or that's what you're trying to be good at, is doing nails and you suck at it. Right. You should want people to tell you so yeah. that you could get better at it. Well, like I said, I've been doing the hurt thing for a minute. So mm -hmm. I used to do like the full glams, mm -hmm. like, and I didn't. Been very honest, brutally, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I didn't run into people who be telling me like that's how they work. Mm -hmm. Like, like. My girl, that's, that's my work. That's how I do it. I'm not mm -hmm. switching it. But I really wasn't being mean. Like, I'm really yeah, I'm mean. really trying to help you out. Like, yeah. You you should be glad because what if I ain't say nothing and I talk behind your back? Right. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell so, you to your so face. So you're working on your honesty. Working on my honesty. <laughs> okay, so be honest. How my hair look? 
Y'all are cute, but you need to come shop with me. Okay, I'm gonna okay, shop with yeah. you. Okay, I'm then you gonna too. be bad, be bad. I, okay, yeah. now. Okay, now. I'm working on my little leave out. I'm working on my little leave. Cause I be, I'm, I'm the girl. Everybody be like, legs. Why you ain't fix your hair? Cause I didn't feel like it today. Like I'm I the girl see. that comes on the show. Like sometimes I just don't feel like I'm a human. God damn it. I know that's I right. I feel like combing my hair today. It's not gonna get combed, and you're yeah. not gonna make me. But I do feel like I'm trying to get better with you know getting my getting my looks together. But you are already beautiful. Mm -hmm. But one of my wigs gonna make you beautiful. Learn. Okay, so I, <laughs> but the thing about wigs, yes, Ooh, I be so hard. Y'all don't like wigs? It's just hard for me to wear them because I feel like it's so much maintenance, yeah. like keeping them down, mm -hmm. keeping the lace looking right. Then after, you know, we be wearing makeup when we record, so then I feel like makeup be getting in the lace. It's hard to like wash it off. Then I work out all the time. So, girl, I just be going through it with a wig. Mm -hmm. So it's so crazy that like I'm a person that switched my wig so much really? that when I hear people yeah when I hear people say that I be thinking like damn like it made me want to try other hairstyles cause I'm a wig girly yeah. but I be like damn I want to like a little sew in a but it look good though it yeah, does. you know what I, I will say this is like I say this all the time cause a lot of the girls be like lace wear and I be like oh it's right there mm -hmm. it's definitely right there I see it <laughs> it's right there it, it's right there <laughs> I but see it's it. definitely giving lace wear and yeah. Aww, but, no, but let me tell you how I know you know what you are doing because I hate when girls have like light colored hair like blonde hair or colored hair and they do the edges Cause oh. I feel like it, sometimes it looks hey. a little, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to my hairstylist. Yeah, yeah. Girl in the icon. you, ladies. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all feel like, like it's blonde, supposed to be slick back when you had a you color. You have like a blonde hair or like a light colored hair. You don't do the edges with that. Mm -hmm. I personally, right? I just think it looks cleaner. It looks very polished. Like mm -hmm. I, it's, it's giving what it's supposed to give. And honestly, doing the edges and then getting your makeup done. Cause see, yes. I, yeah. Cause see, I know like. Their makeup do not be coming out of them baby and when when they the do, mm -hmm. it looks so soggy. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I hate that. And you can tell, like, that's what, like back to what you were saying. Mm -hmm. That wig stuff is a lot of maintenance. And then you sitting there trying to get the makeup up, your lace coming up, rolling back. You gotta even it down. Uh, uh. You gotta have that band on. Oh my god, and that, that be a headache. And that band be hurt. It do hurt. <laughs> it hurts so bad. It be tight as hell. Right, it be cutting off my blood circulation. Yeah, because yes. you, know, you know they have the velcro ones, but you know it start getting loose. So then yep. you got us tied in you the tie tie. Girl. Oh my God. No, thank you. And no, I just feel you. like the smaller your forehead is, too, <laughs> it's harder to, like, make it look natural. No, yeah, seriously. No, that's what I'm saying. You're right. Mm -hmm. It is. Because then it be way down here. Yep. And I got a little head, and sometimes my wig too big. Yeah, it's and my head little the, too. Yes, and they be having the tie so tight in the back, so we don't wrinkle up yes. in the front. Like, be, oh, that's another thing. The oh, girls be having the wrinkle forehead. It's because sometimes the wig be too big. Yeah, girl, get get your rice. Wait, out. I ain't <laughs> never seen that. What y'all mean? They be it's having like a wrinkle the, forehead. Like, it be wrinkled up right here. Uh -uh. Yeah. You know? I used to think the girls needed a little bow tie. A little bow tie. Like, injector? <laughs> no. But it's just a bad wig. Yeah, the they didn't put it on right. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get into... Yes. So you and Mona Leo, y'all are cool. Yes. So y'all, talk about that link up that y'all had. The, it was last week, right? Or oh, my God. Y'all saw that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we was together the other day. So... First, I just want to say shout out to Mona Leo. She a hard ass artist to me. Mm -hmm. um, she's one of those artists where I do admire her work, mm -hmm. like and work ethic. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, especially when I found out she was like an independent artist because mm -hmm. I can relate to that. So yeah. it, my, it makes me admire her work ethic. Like, damn, she independent. Like, it's an inspiration. Like, I know I can do it because she going hard. Mm -hmm. Like, this my fellow rap sister. So we linked up because basically, like, that's how I feel about her. So yeah. I'm like, girl, I'm popping that to your show to support you. Like, you know, I like seeing her work. Um. And we we probably might have had went to the studio, did us a song. Okay, that's what yeah. I was saying. We was going to ask, like, y'all working on something? <laughs> yeah, and that motherfucker right. so slim. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I believe it, because y'all music is good and hers is good. Yeah. Y'all you know? got that country. Like, y'all some country The country girl. twain. That country twain. Mm -hmm. I love being a little uh, a country girl. Yeah, you so do. we definitely wanted to talk more about y'all music. So I wanted to talk about, like, being in a group and getting along. Like, if you not getting along with somebody in the group, does it affect the group dynamic? See, first, we ain't even in a group. We just uh, friends. friends. Yeah. Right, so we not in a group. Um, I feel like we be having a lot of space to miss each other. Like, we friends. Mm -hmm. Especially after... Everything is like we be on our own waves, our own time. So whenever we get together, it's nothing but vibes and fun. We want to work together. Mm -hmm. You know, we check up on each other and stuff. But I don't think it's hard getting along if you understand everybody's personality. That's like, true. I know that this person is 
like that. They busy or mm-hmm. they might not hear back. Like, I'm not going to be mad about that. Or, I know this person really love us, but she just to herself. Yeah. Like, she don't mean no harm. Like, mm-hmm. that's still my bitch. Like, you know, you just got to understand people's personality. And, you know, when you bump heads, get past it. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And can y'all believe we're already halfway through the year? So you have to ask yourself, have I met my goals? Have I stuck with my goals? One thing, therapy is going to make sure you stay on track with that. Absolutely. And y'all know... Okay, the first half of the year is over, but now we sneak it into that second half, and now it's about to be fall, winter. You know that seasonal depression start kicking in. So it's so important to make sure that you have a therapist and have somebody that you can talk to during those times of the year. And one thing that I really love about BetterHelp is that it's so easy and convenient. You can literally access your therapist from wherever you are, whether it's the comfort of your home, from your laptop, or you could do it even in your car from your cell phone. Yes, so all you're going to do is go to betterhelp.com backslash poor minds. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com backslash poor minds and get 10% off of your first month. Take a moment, visit betterhelp.com slash poor minds today to get 10% off of your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com backslash poor minds. Mm-hmm. That's true, because life be life, and you got to give you people their space sometimes. And I think a lot of the time in friendship, people miss that. You know, yeah. they be feeling like, oh, you supposed to be my friend. I haven't talked to you in two weeks. Right. You don't know what that person going, going through. through. You got to give them a little bit of grace. Yeah. And I think sometimes people take it personally when you not talking to them or reaching out to them. Yep. But it don't even have nothing to do with them. Yeah. So that's good. You very but, wise. That's why I said, that's, that's how I know they real. That's how I know yes. they real friends. Because I was ready to catch y'all in a lie. But Gloss said the same thing. <laughs> She did. She did. She, did. she, she did. said the same exact thing. So I was like, okay, they real friends. I was about That's to say, crazy because I swear I didn't know she said. I know. Well, she just came she on did, last yeah. week. We have exactly. So you ain't heard it. So mm-hmm. I really don't know. Really yeah. don't know. I'm working on my honesty. Yeah. Honestly, I was gonna be like, well, girl, that ain't what Glock is. <laughs> <laughs> no, they like Glock. Yes. Okay. So um, you touched a little bit about being an independent artist. And um, right. I we wanted to talk about that for sure too because you know obviously you know you gloss and glow are really close you know mm-hmm. you know she signed to um, QC and then CMG. glow is CMG. CMG. Yeah. so how do you feel like seeing you know like being independent because you know everybody in the industry always says though being independent is better it mm-hmm. is though you just need the structure like yeah. mm-hmm. that's the only thing that I noticed from my friends okay and me mm-hmm. that I miss a lot of the structure that they have. Mm-hmm. Okay. But like I said, like we real friends, so like I still uh get certain things just off the strength of my friends. Right. Like um I was saying in an interview uh last week, Gloss manager all the time will reach out to me and be like, Hey Carbon, Gloss can't make it, you wanna do this, or hey Carbon, Gloss got oh, this. That's what's up. We want y'all to pop out. So it's like she got that extra structure, but it's mm-hmm. like they they still look out for us. Mm-hmm. Even with glow people, like they still look out for us, you know, a lot of times. And mm-hmm. it's like me being independent and being able to experience that right yeah. now, I feel like I'm learning a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like life is teaching me a lot, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, so now I know what I want. When I go into whatever situation, like, I know what I want from the right. situation. And I'm not missing out on shit. Right. So, that's what I feel, know? too. I think a lot of times, because I know I can't speak for Drea, but I can speak mm-hmm. for myself. I think that's, like, something that we went through as well, like, feeling like, oh, well, I want to do this and I want to do that. I'm like, but you have so It'll much come. freedom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can get in that studio and create whatever you want you don't have people being like oh we don't like this for her and it's we don't not as many like, you can literally do what the yeah. fuck you want to do but as creators like mm-hmm. um artists you know we need that freedom because yes. in this generation now people like you for being yourself yes, they don't I like agree. you for you trying to ride this wave and ride this wave ride this wave mm-hmm. like you're gonna get shot down mm-hmm. don't nobody want to see you being a follower like people like for you to be yourself mm-hmm. so as an independent artist i feel like my project that's coming out diary of a hustle is like literally my diary like right. and it's like I'm really talking about my personal things, and I feel like the world gonna love it. Cause, mm-hmm. and if you don't, then fuck you. Cause right. you don't like me. If you don't like my work, then you don't like, you don't me. like me. Cause it's That's me. True. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's a lot of truth in it. And I feel like now we're we're really getting more people to blow off truth and not an image. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I fuck with that. Yeah. I do too. I feel like people love genuineness. Mm-hmm. You know yep. what I mean? And I think people can see through it too. Like people know when you being real and you being the real version of yourself mm-hmm. versus when you just trying to put on. And I do think these days that's the difference. Like it's harder to put on too because of social media. Like yep. so many people live their life on a daily basis on the internet. If you're not being real and you're not being authentic, it's going to come off. Back in the day, I feel like artists had the advantage of like not having people in their business as nope. much because you we would just see them most of the time on TV and interviews yeah, or TMZ. like TMZ. Yeah. What was in magazines back in the day? Like, right. yeah, you know, like the little uh, um, blog Inquire, magazines, like, in, Inquire yeah. and all of that <laughs> shit. So, yeah, it's like we really didn't have no insight on the artists themselves. These days, everybody got TikTok. Everybody got Instagram. Mm-hmm. Everybody posting on their story every day. So if you being inauthentic, it's going to come off that way. It is. And I feel like those are the people who don't really do as well. Right. You got to be yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to be yourself. But I, we talked about this a little bit yesterday. We had a little pool day. Mm-hmm. I really think, though, I wouldn't mind us going back to days where we didn't know as much about the artist. Really? Yes. Cause why? I, I'll tell you why. Because it'd be like somebody that you like so mm-hmm. much, and then they say something, and you'd be like, that makes oh, me not yeah. like you. I think that we need to know less about each other. I'm not going to lie. I you know like what I... We didn't even you know what our fags was corny. On social media, you will watch a person so much, you feel like you know them. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it's like, dang, I feel like you my cousin. You just disappointed me. Yeah. Like, I really feel like I know you. I didn't watch your dog grow up. I didn't yeah. watch your kid. Like, I feel like I really know you because I watch your videos, you know? Right. And I've been watching your videos, so I feel like, damn, my cousin didn't let me down. Mm-hmm. You know? But I feel like that's like the mystery about Beyonce that people love. Like, Because we, really, we really don't we know. We don't know what she thinks about X, Y, Z. We don't know yeah. how she feels about this. We don't even know, like... We really don't even know her true personality because every time, every interview she's ever done, mm-hmm. she's very, like, media trained. Yeah. We really don't know her personality. But I think, that's like, true. that's probably a good thing. But you see somebody like Rihanna, we do kind of see her personality more, and it's worked for her. But she also doesn't comment on things that are, that could rub people the wrong way, like politics right. and, you know what I'm saying? Things like that, religion, stuff like that. Like, we don't know what she believes when it comes to politics. Or at least I don't. I've never seen her talk about it. No, yeah, I feel like that just goes back to, back in the day, I feel like labels and stuff put more into artists' development. Mm. These days, I don't really think they put a lot into that as much anymore because there's so many artists that it's like if you was getting proper media training, mm. you wouldn't have never said that. Right. Right. But now in the world, though, they kind of like when people say off-the-wall shit. Yeah, It's kind of working. The off-the-wall shit kind of working, you know? I feel like it can work, but I don't want it... The thing about it is, like, I like to see... Long but don't happy. do it just because. Right. Right. Like, because one thing I was like, when I was getting ready today, and I was like, I was like, damn, I forgot she's so young. Like, you're only 22. Mm-hmm. You're so far ahead of the game. Thank like, you. as far as everything that you're doing. Because, baby, when I was 22, I was <laughs> popping that pussy in the club, getting oh. drunk. <laughs> oh, I'm talking to this nigga, that nigga. <laughs> Wig was sliding back. I had $2 what? in a dream. What? I was cutting up at 22. For real? But I'm telling you, like, you're so smart, and you have so much going for yourself so like having you here on this couch and we vibing and I see how your personality is like, I'm like okay she cool mm-hmm. there's been people that sit on the couch and I'm just kind of like mm, okay. like energy you be like energy wasn't right but so I would hate to see you say something crazy mm-hmm. right and then you have a moment that you go viral but people not paying attention to your music that's bomb as exactly. fuck exactly they're paying attention to what you're saying but I'm on me yeah. you yeah. see what I'm saying so that's why it's like the young girls like I be wanting y'all to like especially the ones that are so so talented mm-hmm. it's like man focus on that music and keep dropping that music you see people have a viral moment but it's a, it's that's what it is. That's a all moment. it is. Is a moment. It's fleeting. Yeah. yeah. It's like how many people have had viral moments and everybody was talking about them and then six months later they know where to be found. Exactly right. Like we're not even checking for them no more. Right. Because we were just paying attention to what they did. Yep. So speaking of artist development, I do want to t- touch on that a little bit too because. Um, recently, JT did a tour mm-hmm. and, you know, she was going to like a bunch of different clubs and like hosting and like performing. Right. And everybody had something to say about it. People were either like, you know what? This is what artist development is. She's getting mm-hmm. that work in. She's doing the groundwork. And then other people were like, oh, you know, she's performing at these 
holding the wall clubs and stuff. So I want to know how how y'all felt about that, about like her tour that she did. And should more artists um, do that? Or should they wait to like open for another big artist and do mm. bigger? Well, rooms? as an artist, I feel like sometimes you just want shit now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to go out there and you're going to do the footwork and you're going to put the groundwork in, you're going to build their core, you're going to build their strong, solid foundation around yourself, mm-hmm. then do it. Yeah. And that's how I feel. Like, I feel like I be in that phase where I don't give a fuck what nobody say about right. me. You say I'm at a motherfucking club or whatever that's look like a hole in the wall. But, mm-hmm. bitch, I bet I got paid to be here. And I bet right. that I'm finna tell everybody to go stream my EP. <laughs> and I bet we finna have a good time. Right. We gonna yeah. take shots. Yeah. We ain't stun you. Right. Like, we ain't. So, I feel like I'm, like, putting that groundwork in. So, mm-hmm. I feel like... Um, seeing another artist do it, it's kind of like you put that groundwork in. Yeah. You built your solid foundation. You built your fan base up. You know, even if it is from scratch, you know that where you're going. Yeah. You know, you know where you're going. Yeah. I agree. And I also just feel like I would prefer a art a artist try to start off doing what they know they could pack out and sell out mm-hmm. versus trying to go to a big ass arena and you can't even sell it out. Like I feel like it's good to. Start where you think you, you know, where you can, you feel like you're good at. Like, I don't know. I just feel like people was just being real harsh on her. This was her first solo tour. Yeah. She did it by herself. It wasn't yeah. the city girls. It was just her by yeah. herself. So I feel like, you know, for her to have been doing these venues, which were still pretty big venues. Yeah. These was like packed, I mean, popping clubs in yeah. the cities that she was at. She was so, at Sakai. We love us. She was at Sakai in Houston. And it was mm-hmm. packed out. Like, it was hella fucking people there yeah, to see her. Like, they was singing along and everything. So, what I don't thing know. about other people they'll try to hold you to higher expectations than they yes. hold themselves mm-hmm. they if you worried about it. yourself as much as you worry about me yep. then maybe you could have an opinion but until then don't worry about what I'm doing you holding me to these high expectations when all I'm trying to do is put the work in I'm right. trying to put the work in I'm trying to, put the work I'm trying to get my money exactly. at the end of the day you couldn't even sell out these clubs that I'm in but exactly. you got all of these to say about me exactly. you right and I also feel like we need to get back to artist development because mm-hmm. I'd be damned if I go to an arena and you on stage looking like a fool because you don't know how to work a crowd. Crowd control is important. It is. Keeping a crowd of even 200 people yeah. in the car. So what makes you think if you ain't done a crowd of 200 that you can do a crowd of 20,000? So I right. feel like... Yes, we need to get back to artists doing the small clubs. There's literally, if y'all, this is how I know the young, see, this be the young kids. They don't be knowing. You can literally get on YouTube and see Lady Gaga performing at a fucking mall. Right. Jeezy used to be at the club performing too. Right. What? Nicki Minaj used to be in the club. Yes, right. they the did. Clubs. Yep. It's like, look at these artists and look at these people now. Mm-hmm. So it's like, we definitely need to get back to that. Y'all need to go to these clubs and perform and get that, that, what's it called? Um... Stage, stage, stage present. present. Yep. Yes, y'all it's need- like practice. Yeah, yep. like a lot of stuff. I look at it like practice. Like even when um our first tour mm-hmm. and we had went on. Glow tour. Mm-hmm. We went on Glorilla uh, Anyways Life Grace tour. It's mm-hmm. just seeing how she performed and her crowd control, you know, I feel like it was an opportunity to be there and just experience everything and also learn. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was on tour is when I noticed what you said. Crowd control yep. is important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, now, like, I could go in front of any crowd. I'm not scared to perform because yep. I feel like anywhere it go, we finna be lit. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's a good time. We finna be lit. Like, you might not know my music, but you gonna be like, oh, okay, who, who was, was that, though? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to go look me up after the fact. What's that? What's that thing called Shazam? They be Shazam. Oh yeah, we well, can just man. play the music and it'll show you the song. It'll play you the song. I'll be Shazam yeah. and everything. <laughs> No, Shazam oh was God. a great invention. But no, the <laughs> crowd control is very important. I feel like we went through that too. Like our first tour, I feel like it was a mess. Oh my God. Everybody was crowd. Yes. Like rowdy. Wait, wait, wait. What was y'all doing on the tour? It's like a live version of the podcast. Okay. But it's like a little bit more interactive. So like, you know, we'll play games with the audience. Like so like it. we'll have them come on stage. We have like oh, this segment it. where we do like a twerk contest. It be lit, girl. It be fun. Yeah. So, but, but the first. To, oh my bad, girl. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say y'all had to learn how to let's incorporate Twerk contest, let's mm-hmm. incorporate games like so you can't it. Girl, yes, I was, you know, and just not being up. drunk too. Cause we used to be <laughs> their first tour, we used to be drunk before. I'm like, how y'all doing, Dallas? They're like, we're in Houston, but I'm I think like, oh. it was more so nerves too. You know, like we yep. was nervous because it was our first tour, That's so I think we used to be drinking a little bit more than we should have before mm-hmm. we got on stage. And then by the time we get on stage, we playing the drinking games and we doing all of this, so we yeah, taking more Molly, shots. Molly. And then before the show is over, we mm-hmm. fucked up. Oh and that ain't God. what people came to see. Mm-mm. 
Mm-hmm. So, oh my God. Ooh, a time. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going we gonna to move on. Okay, so we have Aja today to replace Ty. Mm-hmm. Y'all give it up for Aja. Woo! Okay, Aja, I'm sipping this drink down. This really Me too. Good. Mine almost gone. So, Aja, first of all, give us a little background. So, you know Ty. You, how, how do you and Ty know each other? Um, I started working with her after, with So Mixed. So okay. I was one of her original star tenders when mm-hmm. she originally started the business going on maybe like three years now. Okay. So yeah, I look, know. I was like, this this drink is very Ty Cody. It is. It's good. <laughs> she talks your way. I told you so, so Mixy gonna be in the house even yeah. when Ty not here. We are here, baby. This drink is really good. It's, it's really good. good. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. Okay. Yeah. So what is it? What are we drinking today? Okay, so today we are drinking a watermelon jalapeno margarita. Uh we have Watermelon muddled, and then jalapenos and mint, and then agave, some lime juice, and then we top it with a uh, watermelon soda water. Mm-hmm. And then we, you know, you just cook it. It's, we labeled it as a set it off, you know, in honor of, you know, this Miss Mayor right here. We said, <laughs> we said not the summer right over here. You know, we got the herbs and spices and everything. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad y'all enjoying yourselves. I hope Thank y'all. Thank you. Yes, you're it's welcome. delicious. I'm gonna need another one. That's what I said. I'm gonna need another one in the mm-hmm. minute. You like your drink, girl? It's good, for real. And it's that's sweet. your outfit. It, it do. really do. But no, at first I told her I was skeptical because the spice. Oh yeah, yeah. and I it got do you got that spice, but. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's sweet. It do so we balance it out. It, it balance it out. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, the Nicole. And let me tell y'all, I have been tuned in to College Hill. It is so good this season. No, it's so good. The tea's so juicy. They got everybody on this season, y'all. So if y'all have not tuned in, y'all need to. They got Saucy Santana. They got Carlos Middle. They got Tamar. They got everybody on this season. And it's getting real spicy. Mm. You know I love a little drama mm-hmm. and tea. And the best part about it is that they're really going to class and getting their education. Yep. It's super funny. So y'all can catch it on BET Plus. If you aren't subscribed, go to BET.plus right now and sign up. It's super funny. Y'all are gonna love it. It's too tea. It's good. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. we ready for the first topic, Drea. Yeah, so for the first topic, I really want to talk about internet beef versus handling things in person. <laughs> I feel like Girl. I don't know. I feel like internet beef have kind of always... Well, no. Niggas just used to be beefing straight up back yeah, in the day. Yeah. I feel like with this generation, it's always some internet beef. Like, everybody always arguing on the internet. And then when you, they see the people in person, it be quiet. They be in their like, um, section. It's just I'm like, the total opposite. I won't say shit. And I'll walk up to you and be like... Want well, all the smoke. Um, <laughs> What? You recall that one time when pop? <laughs> oh, why the fuck is he playing with me? So you're a fighter. You be fighting? Not no more. Okay. Not no more. Okay, when was down. the last time you got in a fight? Don't lie. <laughs> we working on being honest. Don't lie. Was the last I just time? hate talking about oh, well, it. you don't have to Because it went story. so viral. It was like, long story short, mm-hmm. I put my hair into the stores in Memphis. Mm-hmm. Okay. I linked with my business partner, lunched my hair in the stores. I ain't even been a week. This one girl, she goes to steal to her. <gasps> Long story short, I ain't say shit to her, period. Nor her folks, my dad was trolling. And they thought it was so funny on the internet. One day, mm. we was out in public, and somebody was like, I see such and such. Like, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm finna come smack her ass. Mm-hmm. And you went smack her? Probably. But I feel like that's... <laughs> I feel like that's the reason to smack a bitch, though. No, but for like, real. Now, 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 I'm way more mature. I would right. not do that. Like, mm-hmm. I would, I would let go and let God. You know what right. I'm saying? I get it. But I don't know. No, but listen, Drea, there's a difference, though, because it's one thing to steal my shit because you're fucking with my my, my, my business, my, my brand, business, my everything. Money. Yeah. But then you get on. The internet. Mm-hmm. Once you take that shit to the internet, now it's about to get. I'll be honest. I feel like it was a little ego thing with me too, cause it was like, oh, you think, cause bitch, I'm big. I ain't no. in the streets no more. Like, cause I used to really be like selling my hair like in the front of the house. Yeah, I oh, post okay. up on the block. Like I was yeah. really selling my hair like a like I was trapped in something. <laughs> like for real and. 
it's like nobody ever played with me. Like mm-hmm. you, nobody ever took from me. Nobody ever ever stole from me. So for you to do that and you know how I get down, yeah. yeah. Like you think just because I didn't drop the hit, I like you think just because I like I. Like, I done got a little popular. Outside. You think I'm not gonna smack you? Like you think I? Yeah. <laughs> like I saw. I think it was a little ego thing. But even if so, I did. I still didn't do the most. I just right. did a little razzle dazzle, mm-hmm. yeah. and that was it. Like. I, I feel like it was an ego thing. It was very immature. Because, you know, I could have let go and let God, for real, I really could have. Because, you know, if you're doing stuff like that anyways in the world, you're not going to be blessed. Right. That's true. You're not going to be blessed. So sometimes you could just let go and let God. God will really handle your battles. You just stay still. Like, I 100% you know. agree. But sometimes people be having you fucked up. They, they do. They be trying you because they think you're not going to say they something. They do. So I, I don't really react to things that people say to me, especially strangers or when people do weird stuff from my hometown. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rarely happens, but when it does, I see you. I see you. I mm-hmm. see you, bitch. So I let it be known. I see you, and I'll keep it cute. But you, you really don't want to go there. You, re- you just don't. Let's just not do this. Yeah. Don't so do it. Yeah, just don't do it. So I feel like with internet beef, I think when people take things to the internet, that's when shit gets weird. I think with anything though, because I'm not gonna lie, I used to be that girl, mm-hmm. not with my friends or anything, or like when I really was beefing with somebody, but I used to be like on the internet subbing my nigga all the time. Right. And I was just like looking back on it, I was like, you're so weird. Cause why wouldn't you just pick up the phone and call your Say man? something. Just yeah. say something. So I think when you do anything, subbing your friends, subbing your man, you got an op, you talking about your ops on the internet, what what are we doing? But I feel like that shit for weak ass hoes. Like mm-hmm. you must be scared to speak up. I was a weak ass hoe. I agree. Speaking from a former weak ass hoe. <laughs> I was on behalf of the weak ass hoes. On behalf of the former weak ass hoes. I was. On behalf of the community. Uh, uh, crazy. Hey, whoa. I was. No, 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 for real. That was some weak ass shit. I feel like, you, though. It was. Why would I like, this shit can't <laughs> be. I feel you. It was. It was some weak but ass you, shit. I will say this about Lex. Lex ain't never really been a confrontational person. Like, yeah. she avoid confrontation. She like that in general, though. When it comes to her friends, yeah. her relationships, she don't everything. Want the drama. Yeah. Me? <laughs> I'm going to bring it to your front door every time. <laughs> I've never really been door. an internet person either. Like, when it comes to, like, my nigga, my friends, anybody, like, I'm going to straight up let you know, like, bitch, you got me fucked up or oh, I'm not fucking with you. I, I always been that way. Like, I remember when I was in school one time and I got the phone, like, bro, the girl, she was talking so much shit. I knew she was talking about me on the internet. They just kept talking about me, kept mm-hmm. talking about me. So I'm in my head, like, I can't wait to get to school the next day. Like, they think they're going to yeah. ha-ha my post. Because, yeah. you know, we used to be on Facebook. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm still on Facebook. But, you know, like, they <laughs> think... They Facebook gonna, be popping. I love Facebook, though. Like, they going to ha-ha my post. <laughs> we got to go to school the next day. Oh, hell no. So... I always been that way. I always been like, I'm not finna do that social media shit. Like, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, cause I'm gonna see you in person. Like, yeah. I'm gonna say something to you, girl. We got to school, and I definitely told her. I was like, yeah, the next time you speak on me, I'm gonna smack your ass. I'm weak. Or if we do exchange words on social media, I'm gonna have the same energy when in I person. see you in person. Yeah. Like, I used to be fighting too, girl, but I haven't gotten a fight since high school. That's but good. in high, but that's because I grew up. Like, I feel like once I got out of high school, but in high school I used to stay fighting. Was they hating on you? They was a I little bit. I feel like they was hating on you. I mean, I just think girls be mean. You know, like, I don't, be so be I don't even be wanting to say it's just necessarily hating. But you know what I will say? My mama used to always tell me back then, she used to be like, people see something in you that you don't yet see in yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I really, looking back on high school, I feel like, it used to be petty shit. Like, it used to be shit over niggas. Like, they'll be mad because the Girl, nigga likes you him. and they like the nigga. And like, I don't even like the nigga. I don't even like this nigga. He like likes me. All. He choosing me. But they used to be mad and shit. And it just used to be dumb stuff, girl. I feel or just you. gossiping. You know, in, co- in high, school, high school, I feel like it'd be a lot of gossiping, a lot of cattiness, pettiness yeah. for no reason. Because everybody immature. Right. And nobody really been through shit yet. So, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like now it's like, I, I would never get on the internet and like, sub my boyfriend right. or like sub my friend I would say this I've never been a girl to like sub my friends I don't know I just hold my friends I've always held my friends at a higher regard than I do men but I will say it's just like lessons learned because another thing is I don't like people in my business 
Dancing. And it's like, I feel like if I if I say one thing like, oh, these niggas ain't shit, you I be talking about my dog. My I be talking about a dog. Right. I'm talking about y'all niggas. Not, and you not think my niggas. nigga ain't shit. Right, mm-hmm. so now it's like, oh, Lex and her nigga, man are broke up. They must be fighting and this and that. So it's just like, when it comes to like the internet stuff, I just don't say anything unless it's that's, positive. That's exactly how I feel. Like, I'm a mm-hmm. private person, so you're going to know or see what I want you to know and see about mm-hmm. me. Like, and I don't have people around me who I feel like are spreading my business or nothing. Like, yeah. I'm very selective with my circle. Yeah, you, you got to have to be. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, I really don't go to the internet saying certain shit, giving folks a show, letting yeah. them, allowing them to be in my business or allowing them to draw an opinion on some shit that ain't even got nothing to do with them. Mm-hmm. I, you know? You got to mean. Girl, hell no. Nah. Okay, okay, I had to ask. Man, I had to these ask. Niggas. Or, these niggas is something else. You know, I, don't know. I think my expectations are high. No, they're not. So don't don't think that. No, now. no, I'm being funny. I know my expectations are too high, but yeah. I'm saying like I'm trolling. Like they yeah, just, yeah, they not yeah. meet your. They not rising to the occasion. I will say a lot of women they feel like oh my expectations are too high. Let me adjust them. Like no, no don't no, adjust no, no. them. You keep that shit right where it's no. at. And then it's like you're only 22. Like girl, you gonna go through so many like things that you Thanks. care about, things mm-hmm. that you don't care about. Like by the time you hit 30, you are gonna be like oh the type of men I l- like at 22 is gonna be a completely different man. Mm-hmm. Bro, the type of Men, I like be changing every yeah. month. <laughs> every time I meet a new nigga and he do some shit, I'm like, exactly. Oh, this is why I you, don't. Exactly, you scumbag. What type yes. of men you like? It's so bad. I, I like <laughs> niggas. Like, I like good niggas. It's so bad. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. It's so bad. Like, I'm just... I'm I'm from like I'm from Memphis. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I grew up around nothing but right. rough shit. Uh-huh. And so, having a nigga that's just like... A pushover, a bitch ass nigga. Like mm-hmm. I just can't do it. Like my niggas gotta stand on business. Yeah, but I, I don't you. want your mind still in the streets. Like okay. you gotta be one of them people that didn't elevate it. And I didn't mean niggas Drake like that. Though. I love to call them reformed hood niggas. A reformed hood. I mean, nigga. you know, ain't nothing wrong with a nigga that's reformed because he know he <laughs> knows the best of both worlds. You know, like he was in the streets, but now he got his shit together. He legit. Girl. I feel like as you get older, though, y'all type will change. Like you won't be into that anymore. You think so? As you get older, yeah, it, once you get exposed to more and you start doing more, you're not going to date like the hood niggas no more unless, yeah. like I said, he reformed. I really mm. think that too because like even the ones that I have had reformed hood niggas, I feel like they handicapped me. Like you're trying to do too much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you making me lazy and I don't want to be lazy because mm-hmm. this is my career. You know, my name attached to this. So it's like I be in that space where I'm like, you know, I just don't need a nigga. Like, I can have friends. We can have fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I don't need a nigga. Like, don't say you my nigga. Like, yeah. Because I don't need that right now. I need to keep focused, you know? Yeah. And I feel like you 22, too. Like, I always love to tell people in their 20s, especially like early 20s, you got so much time to, like, yeah. find a man and settle down. Like, yeah. you, to me, your 20s is like your selfish season. You should yeah. focus on you. Focus on your career. And then if you end up falling in love in the midst of that, that's great, too, you know? Because you might find somebody at 23 or 24 yeah. and it might be your person. But... I wouldn't go searching for it. Like, definitely focus on you and yeah. the right person to find you, for sure. I know, that's right. You better give that word. I'm just saying. The, the preacher be preaching. Because 22, 22 is such a fun it age. Is. Like, I was looking back to when I was 22. I used to be having fun. I was not worried about these niggas It is a fun all. age. And I be wanting my freedom. Like, I just like my freedom. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want you to try to tell me what I can and can't do, especially not as an artist who is an independent artist, which mm-hmm. means I handled a lot of my business on my own. Right. And that, that'll make some niggas feel a type of way because, you know, you got to talk to people all day or mm-hmm. you might not get, a, get you might get late night phone calls, yeah. but if you see exactly, don't, you in my business. Like, right. I'm over here handling business against the bag. I don't give a fuck what you think it would. Mm-mm. And that be a lot of people biggest problems too. They be letting like me and hold in bag. They do. Mm-hmm. I see it a lot. Because I feel like Women, we will put a man before our career. But men but don't men, do that. They're gonna put oh, they would never first. do they that. They would never. Yeah. If they had to choose between like their job or their career, a woman or their dream woman, they're going to put the, their dream job over their dream yeah. woman. And settle for if the woman. If you ask a woman if she could have her dream job or a dream man, she's going to pick that dream man. Mm-hmm. You think so? I know. Most women, not all women. But you want to know, I think it's just 
genders too. Like women, they're labeled to supposed to be submissive, yeah. and men, they're labeled supposed to be provider. Yeah, right. So a man gonna have that mindset. Like if I can't provide for this girl, I can't be with this girl. Yeah. So they don't mind cutting you off. Yeah. To go get your goals, but a girl is like, oh, I can't provide. This nigga do it. Let me kick yeah. my feet up. <laughs> yeah. Like I ain't gonna go do all that. You know. That's so it's true. just really That's the nature the of the gender. Have you ever had a job? Yes, I had multiple jobs. Really? Yes. You was giving me like, you know, trapping and selling the hair, so. I was always trapping that too, though. Okay, okay, <laughs> got you. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I had jobs when I was in high school. My first job was Burger King, and I was working there with my friends. <laughs> Bro. I know y'all was in that That was the littest shit up. of my life. Oh, we riding. We 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 go to school every day, kick shit. Then we go straight from school to work. We going to yeah. eat, kick shit. Then on the weekends, we going to get our checks and go kick shit again. Yeah. <laughs> we all finna call in. They know we on bullshit, but we the damn near the whole staff. Like, it's yeah. We damn near the staff. We going to be on bullshit. You got to work out. You got to work. You better pick up the morning shift, try with somebody so we can go out on the oh weekend. Yeah, God. it was a vibe. I could imagine that was It fun. was a vibe. Yeah. Young, Working yeah. with your friends just seems so fun. It was I, a, I've I, never had a job with any of my friends. I definitely really? worked with my friends. I mean, I met people at work. Like, me and her yeah. became yeah. friends yeah, working at, at the same place. But I've never actually worked with my friends. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, y'all ready for a little game? Right. Because now it's, it's time, time to, to get, get into the bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. 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 Okay, so we're going to play a little game for the bed today. So, Aja, I need a favor. Can you get us three shots of tequila? We're going to do three shots of tequila. Okay, we don't have to necessarily take them right now. Yeah, we don't have to take them. Aja, I take still got sip. my first shot. Okay. Okay, so you can keep so you yours. So you take a sip. Yeah, yeah. So we, so we could, actually, you know what? When you bring our shots, we're going to top hers off a little bit. You see that? That's we gonna, dangerous. We're going to top it up. See how she be cutting up. She be cutting up. She be cutting up. You know she be trying to get you there. But, but, okay. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And y'all know we are on the go all the time. We don't really have the time to grocery shop when we need to. And I don't like to go out to eat all the time either. Yeah, so what I love about HelloFresh is it like it feels like you're getting restaurant quality food at home and it's pre-portioned, delivered right to your doorstep. So it takes all of the guesswork out. You don't have to measure anything. All you got to do is cook it. And I love the pecan crusty chicken. Mm. It's very delicious and nutritious. nutritious. I like that, girl. You did your big one with that mm-hmm. one. So, yes, all you're going to do is go to HelloFresh.com backslash Poor Minds apps. And also what they're doing right now is they're giving you a free appetizer for life with every HelloFresh box that you get delivered. Mm-hmm. As long as your subscription is active, you're going to get a free box for life, y'all. It's super easy, straight to your door, fresh food. Period. HelloFresh.com backslash Poor Minds apps. Go ahead, get you some. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Poor Minds apps for free appetizers for life. One appetizer item per box while subscription is active. That's free appetizers for life at HelloFresh.com slash Poor Minds apps. America's number one meal kit. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to play Truth or Drink. Mm-hmm. Okay. So obviously, if you want to drink, don't drink your whole shot. Just take a little sip. Yeah, you okay. can just take a sip. Just take a sip. You we ain't trying to get you too We ain't trying to get you. It's still <laughs> early in the day. It's still what, early. What time is it? Oh, it is pretty it early is in the day. It is 4.30. Okay, okay, 4.30. Mm-hmm. It's early in the day. We ain't going to shake you up too mm-hmm. much. We know you big carbon. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going to play on your top. We know I how you get love y'all down. energy, bro. Y'all are so funny. <laughs> Thank you. No, Thank you, girl. Okay, okay. So we're going to do truth or drink. Okay. So we're going to ask you a question. You can either answer the question. Or take and if drink. you don't want to answer the Thank question, you, you can take, I take a little sip. Okay. We'll all participate. Mm-hmm. So we all got to answer. So if, same for us. If we don't want to answer. We're going to take a sip too. We'll take, we'll take a sip as well. Let me get my shots. All right. And if y'all at home want to join in and play, y'all pour your shots up right yeah, now. Y'all shots. Y'all shots. Play together. I don't thank like drinking by myself. So pull y'all shot. Girl, me either. I don't oh, like drinking you. by myself either. Yeah, like, why would I go somewhere and I'm the only one it drunk? I'm gonna be embarrassed. Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. drinking is a group. It, it really it is. is. If you're drinking by yourself, you got you got problems. <laughs> you going through. You some fight some demons. You going through. Some y'all, shit. I'm not kidding. I think about this a lot. I was drinking by myself one time. That's when I knew <laughs> I had to change my life. Oh, me too. I, remember, <laughs> hey. y'all, me and Lex. 
We used to drink a whole, and I'm embarrassed of what we used to drink. Now, wait, wait. Girl, we used to be drinking, you know that barefoot wine? Ooh. Wait, so eat. y'all would consider wine drinking by yourself if you as the If you're drinking a whole one liter bottle? Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. You know, one time I had me and this nigga I was dating a long time ago was going through it, and I just went upstairs and I had a bottle of tequila, and I was just in my bed and I- I was singing Carrie Underwood. Well, I dug. Oh, my he did kids. you in. Oh, I was going he through it. He did you in. And he real was bad. Drinking it out that the was the last time I drank by myself because I woke up drunk, sick, and I'm like, "What is life right yeah. now?" Yeah, it was real bad. I ain't gonna lie. Oh my god, I ain't never did it. Yeah. Me neither. I, once you start drinking hard liquor by yourself at home, like a glass of wine is yeah, okay. Yeah, a glass of wine is fine. Glass of wine. I'll even give you, you know what, like if you come home, because I have a whole little bar set up. Mm-hmm. Right. So like, if I come home and like, I'll make a little drink with my drink machine or make a little espresso martini, mm-hmm. something light, one and done, that's cool. But if you taking shots by yourself, or you drinking go, out the bottle. You need to go see that lady. I went and saw that lady. Go see that lady. No, you see, fighting demons for real. I, I, mean, I fought him, but I whooped his ass. Shout yeah, out to K. Carmen. Shout, shout, shout out to K. K. Carmen. I would have. <laughs> all you had to do was call me. I would have beat your demon. Yay! All you had to, next, next time, the next demon. Yay! Next the time, next I'm gonna demon. Call, I know. I'm like, I got call, something for your ass. Call, call, me. Call. call me. I got you. Okay, call y'all ready to start? We ready. We ready. We ready. So the first question is. Have you thought, have you ever thought about somebody else while you was having sex? Oh, y'all so messy. Ooh. Yes. Are you going to get a little spicy? Uh, yes, I have. Ooh. I'm y'all are so messy. But yeah. I feel like if you take a shot, you answering too, though. To be honest. How? Because you, it's you, either you yes don't want to no. say. Because you don't want to say. I feel her. So it's like, if it's yes, you'll just say yes. If it was yes, you would Maybe say. Maybe I just want to taste the liquor. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You just want to warm up. Okay. Question number two. <laughs> oh. We don't have to get into details. Okay. By the way. Ooh. We- <laughs> have you ever been with a woman before sexually? Oh, my God. Ooh, you can drink if you don't want to. Yes. <laughs> well, we are... Our resident lesbian. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Queen of Peace. You know. Okay. Sip. Okay. She took a drink. Did you take yours? No, I mean, I've told the story before. So, yeah, you know. But this is a new game. Uh, yes, I've unfortunately been with a woman before. Yeah. Why do you say unfortunately? I just don't like it. I don't like women. I don't... It was unfortunate. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't <laughs> it like It was unfortunate. I, I, I'm a, I like men. You like boys. I like boys. I feel you. I like boys. Okay. So I like a little bit of both myself. Okay. Man. Okay. All right, Drea. Question number three. Have you ever had sex in a public place? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Ooh. I have to. I had this boy I was with for so long. Ooh. Like, we was together since high school. Like, I don't know what was wrong with this. <laughs> you said since high school, like you graduated a long time ago. Girl, she you said, just graduated. We, no, we ain't together no okay, more. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. But what was the public place? Can you tell? Or you no, girl, I'm going to steal. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay, okay. All right. Well, she she gonna steal. We know your answer. Me? Yes. Oh, I done had sex in a few public places. You want me to name them? I mean, no, you don't. We don't got that much. <laughs> it done been a yeah. It done been a few. It done been a few places. You know what's crazy? I and haven't... it was recently. One of the times was recently too. It was last year. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Last free. year, recent. I'm thinking you talking about like probably last month, recent. I'm like, oh, oh no, not girl. like last month, but like she's probably still like no, be afraid. I'm weak. You know what? It's crazy. I've done that one time. I've done you didn't like it. I mean, it was just like cool, but it was, just, I don't know. I'm not a person in the bedroom. Like, I am like, I experience different things in the bedroom. Like, I go all out and do nasty, but I'm okay. not that girl who's like, oh, I need the bells and whistles and toys. And yeah. Stuff. I don't need all that. So you went freak in the car? Um, No. I done because did it's that like, too. yeah, I've done yeah. that in the car, but I feel like I have a home and went and we to jail sex. for it. You went to jail See? for it, girl. Yeah, it's so crazy. I got some stories. Okay. Oh yeah, my god. I like to be. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, if the opportunity presents itself, but I'm never gonna be like. Making where it's like people can see me. I'm making other people uncomfortable, or you know, I'm just. I don't want to be a yeah. sex offender because I don't be wilding. I mean, you could end up being a sex offender mm-hmm. for that. That's fair. No, that's so sad. I have burnt this boy's head in a car. I would say before, but I burned his head a couple times. What? What you mean? That mean like you got you got head. 
Oh, 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 oh bang oh, your oh. head. That mean like you got head. Okay, okay, okay. Now, that don't mean nothing crazy. I was like, wait, what that mean? You know, you got to let auntie know now. I'm old now. Mm, okay, yeah. I know I'm old. Okay, okay. So, we got one more. What's the last one, Dre? You want to ask? You want to ask it? What's a sexual fantasy that you have that you have never told nobody? I'm drinking mine. A threesome. Ooh. Okay. That's okay, not that's, bad. That's not, that's not, that's, that's a good bad. one. That's, 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 that's good. That's good. That's a good one. Cause it's like, I just gotta find the right nigga. Like, I gotta really love my nigga. Like, yeah. in order to do that. And then the bitch, she, she, I don't know. She can't be no random. Attracted to? I like girls that look like me. Like, I don't like nobody. <laughs> Like, I like girls that look like me. Like, that's, that's the most that I'm going to put it. Like, I don't like nobody who probably, no mm -hmm. offense, got a bigger booty than me. Like, because okay. you got to think about it. Like, I like girls that look like me. Like, mm. probably, like, around my side. Like, because I like me. Like, when I look in the mirror at mm -hmm. myself, I be wishing it was another me. Yeah. So, if I could find you, <laughs> like, and you another me, like, it's like, oh, I okay. just love you. Two of me? Ooh, I just love you. I like you. that. That's that's a good explanation of it. Okay, I'm that fucking is, with it. Yeah. Well, for me, in my fantasy, like, look, I'm 34. I'm way okay. older than you. So I done done a lot in the bedroom. So I think I'm going to keep my fantasy to myself. Oh, you going to seal. I'm going to seal. No, I had okay. to sip mine, too, because mine a little freaky. I ain't mm. even trying to do all um, it. It's bad. The first thing that I told, y'all ain't going to see it. <laughs> I feel like a threesome ain't that bad, though. Like, a threesome ain't crazy, though. We done been you a know, we're a little huh? older than you, so, like, you know, I'm not saying I have did that, but I'm not saying that I have, have not. not. Mm -hmm. So, mine get a little deeper than that. Yeah. Like, a threesome, okay. Yeah, like, I like that. But, like, but... I think mine a little more detailed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... Maybe we're going to have to cut the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to talk about oh. the Patreon episode. <laughs> Okay, okay. So that was good. That was good. Okay, who got the... Okay, I'm going to still sip. We sip. We going to still sip. We can sip together. We can sip together. We got to We going to finish it? What y'all toast to? We're going to toast to... Toast to y'all new EP. Period. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. Y'all know we have a segment on Poor Minds called Item of the Week. But do you have a product or something that you want to promote and you want it featured on Poor Minds? Your opportunity is here. Period. If you have an item or you have a business and you want to get it promoted, we are now having slots available on the Poor Minds episode. So if you would like to get your product featured for Item of the Week, all you need to do is send an email to Item of the Week. PM at gmail.com. That's I T E M O F T H E W E E K P M at gmail.com. Send us an email and we'll work it out. We're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Get your product, get your business sponsored, and yeah, make you some money. Mm -hmm. We love to support a small business now. And a black business at that. But I mean, it can any, be any business we don't is dis welcome. We don't discriminate. Ah. Any business is welcome. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm not going to say the whole thing. Ooh, me either. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you. Okay, so now it's time to, to get, get into the bow. Hey. The bow. Bow. The bow. 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 Okay, so bop of the week is the music that we've been jamming this week. Yes. Okay. So y'all know it's summertime. I'm in my Afrobeats era mm -hmm. again. Y'all know I go back and forth between like my Afrobeats era and my R&B stuff. So I got another Afrobeat song for y'all. It's not necessarily a new song. It came out at the end of last year. But it just be on my playlist on repeat. It's called Holy Ghost by Omale. Mm -hmm. He is a huge Afrobeats artist. And I don't know. I just feel like he don't miss. So okay. I like to listen to music that's like when I'm getting getting ready, it's like giving me the vibes. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, it just it gives you the vibes. Like, you know, you be feeling yourself. You get a little... Mm, mm, mm. I love Afro. I gotta go listen to that song. Yeah, it's a good... I got, send it to me. Yeah, I'm gonna send it to you. I really... Okay. I'm gonna do another Afrobeats playlist. I haven't done one of those in a while because I kind of release playlists every now and then. So I actually have a new one that I'll be listening to. So it's already done before y'all be like, you always say you're gonna give us a playlist. It's already made. I'm gonna just put the link in right. the bio, period. 
What you been jamming, Drea? Okay, so I feel like my bop kind of old, but we never talks about this song on the show. So Bryson Tiller got this song called Chow. I really like that song. Mm. But you know, I used to be a big Bryson Tiller fan too, back yeah. in the day, like when he yeah. first came mm. out, his first mixtape and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, okay, I like to see him making a little comeback because I feel like he was quiet for a while. Yeah. You know, he kind of went MIA on us. Mm -hmm. But I feel like he been dropping music consistently, I would say, for like the past year or so. Ever since mm. he did that song, well, whose name should not be said. The man. I'm not saying his name. Okay, it's okay. But they... Oh, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. But ever since he came out. That man. You know the man we talk, girl. You got the whisk. You got the whisper. I'm a writer. I'm a. I got a. I got an educated guess. I got a hypothesis. Uh, educated guess. I really I'm got a, a hypothesis. Yes. Hey, I'm a writer. I'm a. I'm a. She gonna type it out. So yeah, ever since he came out with that song, I feel uh -huh. like he been he been coming with the songs with the bobs. So I really like that song, child. It's a good song. Shout out to Bryson Tiller. Okay. He actually got a concert out here, so we should see if we can get. Yeah, to Bryson, you need to pull up on the couch. Mm -hmm. too. I know that's right. Okay, oh, what, what you been jamming? To, boo? So drum roll, please. <laughs> Okay, my vibe for the week is K Carbon featuring YTB Fat, My Money. I've been bumping this song. Well, I dropped it a couple days ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I've been bumping this since hard. last month. Like, hard. Okay. It's harder than hard. That's my shit right now. I don't like no nigga fucking with my money. And it need to be y'all shit, too. Period. Yeah. It do. Get the ladies back in their bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the song that's get the ladies back in their bag. I don't yes. like no nigga fucking with my money. Yeah. Like, don't you do that. You don't fucking play. with my money. So talk about your project mm -hmm. a little bit Girl. as well. This project, when I say blood, sweat, and tears, because yeah. I did a lot on my own. So... I think that people be thinking like with being an independent artist, like you do have help. Mm -hmm. But like my project showed me how independent I am because it's not even about the money situation. It's about the critiquing everything that you do. Like um, I got merch on the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't have a merch team. And of course mm -hmm. I hired people to do certain stuff, but it's like I don't think that nobody ever going to be able to do it how I could do it yeah, in this right, space right yeah. now. So, girl, I had to get my merch together for my, uh, like, mm, it's so good. I'm so ready to, uh, I don't want to speak. Yeah, you don't yes, you know, one idea. of them things, you, you don't want to give away too much. Yeah. It's like one of them things I don't want to give away too much, but I want everybody to be tuned in because it's on the way. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Um, I had to get, like, everything together down to my graphic designs, mm -hmm. down to my shoots, and it was mm -hmm. kind of like, it was showing me me. Like, making this project really showed me me because not only did I make, like, the making the music was the easy part. But right. when I was putting stuff together, it was showing me myself, like, mm -hmm. damn, I really can do this. Yeah. Like, when I shot my Get Money music video, like, oh, like, this song is T. T. Giving. Mm -hmm. Get Money is T. But when I got done shooting that video and I noticed how I was getting pissed off through the day yeah. and I'm just staying calm or I'm just, through. yeah, I'm just noticing certain stuff. It was like, Okay, because I know what I wanted to end. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that I even put it all together by myself, like I had to be my talent scout. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it was just a lot. And mm -hmm. I was like, I can really put this shit together by myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Doing this shit without breaking a fucking sweat. Like, mm -hmm. I'm doing this shit. They trying, like, I'm not even getting mad. I'm telling people this bullshit. I'm like, oh, no, it's fine. Like, mm -hmm. and that showed me, like, oh, like, bitch, you a boss for real. Yeah. Like, you was an independent artist. Like, this project is me, yeah. and it also showed me me. Like, that's all I can say. Okay. I, well, I look, I'm proud of you all. I'm excited. Thank you. I'm ready to hear I'm me. Thank you. So, you tell us about any more features. I know you got YTB Fat. And yeah. then, is the Mona Leo song going to be on there too? No. No. Man. Okay. No, Mona Leo song, that's, that's, that's T for another day. Okay. That's okay, T okay. for another day. Okay. But, this EP, really all my features was people that I'm really cool with. Like, I really didn't even try to scout for features. Okay. okay. You know, so it was really these people that I'm cool with and that we work together all the time. So okay. I got my girls, Glorilla, Gloss Up, Aliza Slam Ronnie. Mm -hmm. I got my brother, Big 30, and I got a, a artist from Chicago named Miller Books okay. that I really fuck with on my oh, EP I'll and YTB Fat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the YTB the YTB Fat feature was unplanned, though. Mm -hmm. okay. Like, I didn't think that that was going to go on my EP when I was constructing my EP. Got you. So it was like, we linked up. Vibes was great. We mm -hmm. went to the studio, did a song. So Came out okay. fire. Came out fire. So who is an artist that you would, like, love to work with? Like, oh. like what's, like, a on your vision board of, like, okay, mm -hmm. this is, I got to get this feature? Um, Male or, male or female? Because I got two artists in mind. So okay, do two. Yeah, you can tell you us about both. both. Male and female. Okay, so... For a female, definitely love sexy red. Like, okay. cause I feel like she authentic. 
Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like I feel like she remind herself, and I feel like she show love. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, okay. a lot of people they don't they they'll get up like up and they don't show love. Mm-hmm. Right. So the people who be genuine, I always love. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and for a male, definitely ride for now because I was watching his career too before yeah. it took that major pop. Mm-hmm. So when I be tuned into people like for real, for real, it make me like love their work because I yeah. like I watched you go where you went. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, no my two. And I okay. thought because he came on the show before. Mm-hmm. And I was so shocked. Nephew. To, we yeah, be calling, calling him nephew. nephew. Shut up, nephew. Right. <laughs> I was so shocked to find out like he had just started rapping. Mm-hmm. Like he hadn't he been rapping. Started, like every time yeah. I ask somebody, they'd be like, "Oh, and the same with you." You know, like I'd be so amazed. It's like you're so blessed to find a talent. Thank you that you didn't know that you had because some mm-hmm. people never find their talent. And it pop off. And it pop yeah. off. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that you found your talent is just I love. I love. But it. I always had knew I could rap. You all lie. Yeah, just you I just didn't take though, it serious. Right, but just because you can rap, though, doesn't mean you have that it factor. Mm-hmm. You have that it factor because not everybody has it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the fact that you took your talent and actually can make money from it and, you know, you can, what you're doing, like, you create an EP at 22. Like, I know you'd be, like, hearing us say, like, you're only 22, but it's like, it is amazing that you mm-hmm. did that by yourself at 22. Like, like I said, what I was doing at 22, man. I was just trying to learn how to set up a hookah. Girl, show. it be me and God. I thought I was doing my big one because I did that watermelon mint mix. I it be me and God. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, though. So you're so ahead of the game. And Thank I was you. like, I just, I, I hope that you realize it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all we trying to say, Chad. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So we going to, what's the name of the project? Diary of a Hustler. Diary of a Hustler. Diary I like of that a name. Mm. You do? Why was I so scared to put it, but... I, I I wanted something a little more, I guess, along the lines of catchier. Why was you scared? Because it, it didn't sound catchy to me. Mm. Yeah, I, get I like it. Diary of a Hustler. Like, the name I had at first was way more catchy than this one, but Diary of a Hustler was more honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Cause I, you are. Yeah, because I really started a diary, like, and not even on purpose. Like, I just had a journal. I was jotting down a lot of my ideas in all the time, mm-hmm. but then I started jotting down... The money I was making. Then I started jotting down prayers. And mm-hmm. then I realized, like, this is low-key turning into a diary. Mm-hmm. And what's so crazy, shout out grandma. My grandma, she don't, she don't be with all this shit. Shout out to your shit. grandma. But <laughs> she probably ain't gonna watch this interview. <laughs> nah, my, no, my grandma, she, but my grandma had got me this journal for one of my birthdays. Mm-hmm. And it's so crazy, I just started writing, like, um ideas in it. Mm-hmm. But I went to the front of the journal, like, the other day, and she was basically like, write down all your thoughts, prayers, and inspirations in this journal. Mm-hmm. And it's like so crazy because I really just started writing in it because it was so convenient. Mm-hmm. But like to go back to the front of it, and my grandma wrote that in there, I was like, okay. My grandma, my mama do that. Yeah. But I was like, okay, like, okay, this blessed by my grandma because my grandma a praying grandma. Yeah, I she a that. praying. She one of them. She a praying grandma. So I'm like, okay, like, yeah, yeah, this blessed, this blessed by my grandma. Yeah, I, mean, I love grandma. that. <laughs> we I talk about that. that all the time on the show. We talk about like journaling and writing your thoughts and your ideas mm-hmm. and your goals down because it's so amazing to like be able to look back to what you was thinking about or how you was feeling mm-hmm. a year ago, two years ago. And it's really good that you started so young. Like I wish that I had started journaling when I was way younger mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. now me at 32 could look back to like what 24-year-old me or 25-year-old me was thinking. So you need to stay consistent with Girl, yeah. I'll say though, I was outside when I was young. Like I was 15. <laughs> when I was young? I was young. Uh, you still young. No, I was young, young. Like, I I was like 15, like y'all gotta think about it. That one song, weak ass bitch that yeah. I dropped, talking that shit, we was living that shit. Yeah. And I yeah. wasn't shit, but like 16, I'm talking about how we sneaking guns in the party, Ooh. about how we, girl, go listen to that song. You was bad. I was bad. Yeah, so was now y'all up. see why I'm so mature now, cause yeah. it's like, <laughs> The stuff that people do at age 20, 21, like I've been having fake IDs. Yeah. I was using my my older cousin ID. Mm-hmm. Like I've been having my older cousin ID going mm-hmm. into these places. Like, and I wasn't even doing nothing bad, bad. Like I wasn't having sex. I wasn't right, doing right. drugs. Like I just started. You was smoking. liking the videos like this. Yeah. I was just gang banging. Like I was just being myself. <laughs> I really was. But it's like, I did all that when I was like 15, 16, and as right. a woman. Just seeing where it led, my brothers especially, mm-hmm. just seeing where all the other girls that led, like, doing this stuff. I'm yeah. like, okay, like, you know, at the end of the day, I like getting money. Right. Yeah. You know, I like getting money. So it was kind of like, I was I was young. I'm telling y'all, like, but we was... But you made the right choice We was lit. Age. We was lit. Yeah. Like, yeah. in high school, we was Y'all lit. was cutting up. <laughs> but it's good to have that discernment at 22, because mm. you still, like I say, you still a very young age. And it's like people, some people still be in their 30s and their 40s doing it. the same shit. They don't get it. So. What little Dirk said? 
man. Bitch, get out the streets. You touching, touching 30. 30. You touching Ooh, He right. wasn't lying. He was not. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And y'all do not forget to call our shot line. I know you've heard of a hotline, but this is the Poor Minds shot line. Yeah, we love to hear from y'all. Y'all need to call in, y'all. And this is not necessarily for questions. You know, we just want to hear from y'all. Like, we want to know y'all feedback, y'all thoughts on the show, or just what's going on in your life. So you can always call 678-827-1826. Yes, and y'all know, keep it short and cute. Don't be calling and letting us know about your baby daddy, sister, brother, cousin, boyfriend, okay? Well, I want to hear about that, actually. Well, you know, they can let a little something, but, you know, we want to keep it cute and short. Mm -hmm. Like she said, this is not questions. This is not pour your heart out. So just call, give us a little feedback, what you want to see on the show, any suggestions, what you think about the show. If you just want to simply give us our flowers, you know, or any, it could be anything. What's bothering you this week? What got on your nerves this week? If you just want to vent and get some things off your chest, Mm-hmm. Call the shot line. Again, the number is 678 827 1826. Not lying. Okay, so now we're about to get into our favorite segment of the week. It's oh, yeah. called Pour Your Heart Out. Do you give good advice? You give good advice? Okay, so if you want your question answered on the show, make sure you email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com. If you're a Patreon member, make sure you put that in the headline that you're a Patreon member. You can skip the line. Y'all also make sure y'all subscribe to our Patreon. It's patreon.com backslash poorminds and subscribe to the YouTube. All that good stuff. Okay, so we got our questions for Pour Your Heart Out. I have question number one. This is a Patreon member. Mm -hmm. So it says... Hi, my girls. Please keep me anonymous. A bit of a buzzkill, I know, but I'm, I know. But how did you, ladies, if ever, deal with your post-abortion mentality? I'm leaving my appointment now, and I'm so back and forth with if I did the right thing, especially because I have a child, and I can't imagine how my life would be if I would have aborted him. But the timing right now and my situation just isn't sustainable for another child. I've become very distant with my family and associates since moving out of state from home, and I lost my best friend to death in 2020. So that's why I've written in because I really don't have anyone else to talk to. Keep doing y'all thing. I rewatch old episodes all the time. Y'all really make my day. Damn. That was hard for That was. It was. Um, you know what? For me, I'm not going to lie. It is something that I do think about sometimes. But when I look at my life now, I know I made the right decision for myself. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we have a fear of being selfish. And I would have rather made that decision than... Um, had a child and I couldn't afford to mm-hmm. feed him or her or provide the lifestyle that I had. Because the life, I grew up very spoiled. I grew up not wanting for anything, but my mom was able to provide that for me. And I'm not saying, you know, we were super mega rich or anything, but I tell y'all about the struggles I went through when I first moved to Atlanta. I was living out of my car for a minute. So I was sleeping in my car. So I would never want to put a child through that. So when I think about stuff like that, and I'm not saying that you're in that dire situation like I was in, but I feel like sometimes we have to understand that everything happens for a reason. And you have to have um, just a really close relationship with God and your faith and knowing that this is the right decision that you made for yourself. And I feel like you just have to live a life of, you know, no regrets. And um, it's, it's a decision that's not easy and should be like lightly taken. Cause I know I do, I do joke about it a lot, but it is something that I do think about. And I just feel like going through a decision like that, you know, in your soul that, like you said, you're not in a good situation right now. So you did the best thing for you and the child that's already here, because you have to think about if you would have brought another child in the world, not only would that child probably suffer, but the child that's already here would have to suffer as well. So I think that you just have to be okay, pray on it, and time heals. So you just have to give yourself time and grace. We have got to do a better job of giving ourselves grace when we go through hard things as well and That's not true. be so hard on ourselves. Not be so hard. Yeah, like I feel like, you know, I make a bad decision or I do something wrong. I'm like punching myself in the face for like, why did I do that? Why? Because we're human. There's no such thing as a perfect person. You know what I'm saying? You live and you learn. So I feel like time heals all. You know, keep your face, stay positive, and just focus on making yourself happy, being a good mother to the child that's already here, and just moving forward. 
Yeah, I agree. I feel like it's hard. Like, it's easier said than done to, like, not have regrets in life. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like when shit happens, you're always going to kind of look back on things and be like, oh, I wonder what my life would have been like if I would have made right. this decision or if this would have been different. But at the end of the day, you have to always do what's best for you in that moment. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I feel like it's actually very responsible of you. You know, I know it's people who's probably going to disagree with me about that, but I think it's very responsible of a person to be like, you know what, I'm not in a position right now financially, mentally, emotionally to bring a child into this world. I know I wouldn't be the best parent that I could be. So I'm just going to opt to not do that. Right. You know what I mean? And I don't think it's anything wrong with, like Lex said, putting yourself first sometimes and making decisions that you know are best for you. You shouldn't feel bad about that. Yeah. You know, and don't let nobody make you feel bad about it either. Because mm -hmm. I think people be having a lot of judgment and a lot yeah. to say when they ain't never been in the shoes. And they also not going to help you. And if they also not going to help always you. always got something to say, okay, are you going to help me? Are you gonna are you help gonna me, help me raise child? the child? Are you gonna help me financially? You know what I'm saying? Emotionally, everything. So yeah, mm -hmm. you gotta do what's best for you for sure. How yeah. you feel about it? I never had an abortion, so I really hate speaking on topics that I never experienced right, before right. because I feel like I could never understand that pain. Right. Mm -hmm. I could never understand that fear. I could never understand that mind frame. But I do also feel like it's a very hard decision to make. I don't mm -hmm. feel like people just go in there and be like, oh, I'm gonna do this. You know, I feel like it's always a hard decision to make. Yeah. Even if people joke about it, it's still like, damn, I did that. Yeah. And um, I feel like if you had to make that decision, a, a, a executive decision, a decision for your life and your daughter's life, because you're not being selfish. You still got another kid that it fall back exactly. on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you're exactly. not selfish. Um, You still got another kid to provide for. And sometimes... Raising kids in the worst environments, like, it just mess up their life. Yeah, you're doing so, more damage. Yeah, so yeah. if you said, I don't want to mess up their life, I don't want to make them go through this, mm -hmm. then I feel like that was a responsible decision. Yeah, right. You know, and the fact that you even feel that way about it shows that you're not a bad person. Mm -hmm. Right. It shows that you didn't think it was funny, you didn't do it to be ill, you didn't do mm -hmm. it out of ill intent. You really right. didn't want to. Right. right. So just even feeling the way about it shows what type of person that you are. And I feel like mm -hmm. that also should tell you, like, you, you you just making, you know, decisions that you got to make. Right. It's you got to do what you got to yeah, do. Yeah, you, you got to do what you got to do. Back. Agreed, agreed. And good luck to your journey, child. For real. Yeah. Not easy. All right, question number two, Drea. What you got? Hey, ladies. I've been listening for a few years now, and I just want— Oh, this is a Patreon member, too. So, hey, ladies, I've been listening for a few years now, and I just want to tell y'all, thank you for being the lit aunties I never knew I needed. <laughs> Anyways, hopefully you can help Nisi out. I'm 19, and I live with my girlfriend of a year and a half, and quite frankly, I'm over this relationship. I don't even think I'm gay for real. <laughs> At least not for a white girl. Wait, so a girl wrote that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Right now, it's me, my girlfriend, and her sister in an apartment, but the lease is almost up. My girlfriend wants me to get an apartment with her since we'll both be returning to school in the fall, and we both need a roommate. So it just mm -hmm. makes sense, except I don't know if I want to, LOL. I love her as a person, but we're just not meant for each other. We're almost polar opposites, and she's just a bit too messy for me at times. I don't like consistently cleaning up after grown folks. Mm. She's a sweetheart, though, and we make great friends. She went all out for my birthday this year, so I can't just just drop her like she's not hot, you know? Mm. Drop me like it's hot. I'm weak. <laughs> <laughs> my only other option is to move back in with my family whom I've never gotten along with. So my question is, what would y'all do? Stay with someone who you know you're not meant for, live with a family you don't like, or rack up debt living on campus somewhere? Mm. Man, let's go and let's go. If Period. you really, 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 really feel like my family ain't the answer. This girl ain't the answer. You got to be so deep in your prayer bag that you trust that God got mm -hmm. you when you leap out on faith. Because girlfriends can hold you back. Family can hold you back. Mm -hmm. Only if you allow it. Sometimes you be thinking like, oh, man, I, I need help paying the rent. I need a roommate. I got to do it because this the most convenient person. Stop going with what's convenient. Mm -hmm. Right. And go with what's best. For you. being uncomfortable can make you elevate. Being uncomfortable. Oh, don't it. No. I you right. right there. I feel like, mm -hmm. for me, if it was me in y'all shoes, I'd probably go back to school. Yep. 
I would probably go back to school because yeah. at the end of the day, like, yeah, you accruing debt or whatever, but like, girl, pay, most people don't be paying back their student loans until they like 50 anyway. Sure. So I'm not saying that that's what you should do, but I'm just saying out of all of the situations, like why stay with a woman that you don't want to be with, that you know you don't love, and then you feel like you're not even gay for real? I feel like situations like that could turn bad because really? technically you kind of using you the You're using them. Yeah. And I feel like situations like that don't never end up in a good space. So I definitely wouldn't stay in that situation. And then as far as living with your parents or living with your family, you got to choose your peace. Mm-hmm. If I know I'm going to come home every day and it's going to be some bullshit, I'm not trying to be there. I would rather be in a dorm on campus doing what I need to do. And then who knows? You know, you might end up actually using your degree later down the line. Mm-hmm. But that's probably the option I would choose yeah, out of all of the options that you have. Yeah, I agree as well. Because I feel like if this is somebody like, even though you're not romantically there with her, yeah. you said that y'all have a good friendship and you care about her. If you cared about her, you would let her go. Because that's wasting her time as well. So yep. I agree with both of the advice y'all gave. You do give good advice, girl. And you oh, definitely right. got to trust God. Yes, you got to let go you and let go. Let go. God. Mm-hmm. Period. Okay, so let the people know where they can find you, where they can get your merch, your hair, all that good stuff. Okay, so maybe when this podcast drop, the website will be dropped. But as of now, I'm speaking right now. I got my Cat Carbon official website coming up. My Instagram is Cat Carbon two underscores. Okay, my Twitter underscore underscore K I M B R Y A, and my Facebook. I don't know. I be on Facebook. I'm Kate Trinice <laughs> on Facebook. Okay, and y'all know that EP coming soon. It's gonna be on the AirPod. It's gonna be everywhere around you. <laughs> yes. So when you see it, click it and don't play with me. Period. Y'all better go listen to my stuff. <laughs> we, we gonna listen to it for sure. And we gonna make I know sure they listen right. to it. We and when it. I watch y'all podcast, it better be one of them songs. Better be y'all bops up uh, the. It week. It's gonna be my bops. Period. I, I, know y'all go, beat up. I know y'all can. No. I was just like, I was no. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all gonna like some songs out there for real. I know y'all I know like. I will too. Yeah. I know y'all like. If y'all fucking with the last one, the YTB, my money, I know y'all like. Yeah, we fucking yeah. with it. Okay, okay. Y'all, okay, y'all gonna like some songs out there. Yeah. I'm excited. I so we're like gonna put it. all the links in the bio for y'all yes. to click on. Y'all know we finna get into our karaoke bag. Oh, okay. Mm, and we'll see y'all next week. Bye, y'all. Bye. Period. We cute. Hey. Pop, 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 fucking with my money. It's in your bank account. It's wiry. Don't like my bread tamper with. Don't show me no stack of money. Them could be some counterfeits. Don't come around me flashing money, nigga. I ain't that kind of bitch. I like any man that's shit, but I don't like no nigga that be fucking with my money. Yeah. I don't like no nigga that be fucking with my money. Say, uh, I don't like no nigga that be fucking with my money. Yeah, I don't like no nigga that be fucking with my money. Yeah. Uh, I done flashed a hundred in her face. I ain't gave a shit. Yeah. She say, I yo, fix up a five thousand, but she don't give me shit, but I love you though. Yeah. All she do is complain, but I love this bitch. Yeah. Every time I fuck up, she call my mama, this is my little snitch. Put in my pocket, my bank account proper. Yeah. I just thought that home from the zero, but that's sloppy toppy. Good to that fans take a shot. What you want I copy? I got two houses, but one on the bitch don't know nothing about it. Pop, 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 pop. She don't like no nigga playing with her money. She said, oh, nigga, yeah. never touch the honey. She like, Fat Fox Pocket, stay on pumpkin. Trying to keep it pee, but it's just something about this woman. Then why you read? Don't like my bread, temple with. Don't show me no stack of money. Them could be some kind of feet. Don't yeah. come around me flashing money, nigga. I ain't I'm that kind of be. I like drug dealers, scammers, any man that spin that shit. I don't like no nigga that be fucking, fucking with, with my money. money. Yeah. I don't like no nigga that be fucking with my money. I don't like no nigga that be fucking with my money. I don't like no nigga that be fucking with my money. See this Cuban cost a grip, I spin it. Them bitches be pinching. I don't need to fix my attitude. Used to broke bitches. Yeah. Yeah. K up in my nine stand for cut, throw killer. Yeah. Ask a nigga, drop it off. I expect him to deliver. Period. We got K Carpet in the motherfucking building. Yeah, I don't what the like fuck no going nigga on. that be fucking with my money. Hold Period. on, nigga. And motherfucking down. Period. Y'all know what's going on. Y'all do. Drop my money. Yeah. <laughs>